Hi, welcome to C-Sharp Dotnets. If you want um, the latest videos related to C-Sharp and Dotnet, please uh, visit our website. You can find a lot of videos with step-by-step -step description with a sample code. So if you need, just come to this website and try to browse through the topic so you will just get something useful. To, in today's demonstration, we will, we will look <coughs> on how to creating, uh, how we will call it WCF service using jQuery. Okay, so we will see how using only jQuery we are not going to use any server-side scripting, but we are only going to use jQuery JavaScript to call the WCF service. Then use, so jQuery will send a request to WCF service, WCF service will return a JSON data. And using the data, we are going to render our HTML application. So that's as simple as that. So three things. We will have <coughs> our HTML page, okay, which we uh, will have a, let's say, drop down or this box. And uh, inside this HTML page, we will have our jQuery. Our jQuery uh, will send a request to the user service. Okay, and our WCF service is going to return us back a JSON. Okay, and uh, after taking that JSON, <coughs> we're going to render it back to our HTML page. That's it. So we're not going to use. Uh, yes, of course, for writing the service, we're going to use a uh, Shisha, but apart from that, in the client side. No, we are not going to use any services, but we will be an HTML case. So let's go ahead and start, uh, let's start with the service. Uh, start creating a WCF service. So here in the point, like, uh, I am just going to run through the how to create a service here, but if you want to understand data how to create a WCF service, I am providing the link right here to my another video, which explains in detail how to create a WCF service and how you can post it separately. If you are interested, just click on the link and go there and have a look how to create and post a WCF service. That really, that that is really clear. So right now, uh, I'm just going to create a service. Okay. So let's create a new project. And uh, yes, uh, I'm going to use the WCF service library with Studio template, and I'm going to name it not one. No, not one service. Uh, why I'm naming this not one? Because you know I'm, I'm going to use the not one database. So that's why I'm naming it not one service. Uh, let's see how just like that. And let's click OK. Okay. So right now if you see here, uh, you know, Visual Studio actually has done a lot of things for us. It is, you know, um, added you know this these two things which are really important for the service point of view that is system runtime dot simulation and system dot service model so visual studio has already taken care with that template and it has added uh, these two you know analytics here so again <coughs> another important thing if we go uh, expand the references we can see, see again these two references uh, you know, system dot runtime dot solution and system dot service model has been added. If you are going to create a normal uh, class library, not a WCF class library, so you are not going to keep this video uh, clips as well as the references. So just keep in mind these two uh, things are really important system dot runtime simulation and system dot service model. You need to use them whenever you are going to create a WCF service. <coughs> okay. So uh, let's go ahead. So we have this Apple config i service one dot cs service one dot cs. So let's go ahead and you know uh, change these things, change these things a bit. Uh, so I'll just name it this view. So right now uh, actually we are taking a WCF service library, but uh, you know we need to host it separately. So let's go ahead. I, I just don't want to create a service library separately and you know to host it separately for this uh, demo that's not required actually so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one and what I'm going to do here instead of library uh, I'll just add a WCF 
service app okay there is a service application that's what actually we need so we will say not why service app so we don't need to post it actually separately always we have to create a console application and post this so uh, we are not going to do it now So everything is same apart from right now uh, that you can see you know uh, earlier we had uh, we have it here right now a dot SBC file which is really going to be very useful for us. So what we are going to do now we are going to rename this SBC file as that uh, <coughs> And I will rename <coughs> this interface as editor retriever. <coughs> okay. Yes, I'm going to do it. Let's say yes. Okay, see, I have changed the name of the you know, interface here and it has been reflected here. Alright. So right now what I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm going to uh, delete few methods from my interface and I'm going to add few methods in my interface depending uh, you know on my requirement. So I don't need uh, get data and get data using data contract. I'm going to keep it really simple. So uh, let's first of all delete everything. Okay. Now I'm going to add the uh, operation contract. Okay, so this is the method I'm going to expose. So I'm going to say this one as list uh, on details. Right now, order details I don't I have not defined order details, so let's go ahead and create order details. Okay, so one class has been created uh, with order details, so I'm just going to have few properties here. Since uh, uh, this is the class having only these properties, so I just uh, copy paste the things so that I can save the time here and we can explain all other details which are much required. So right now this order detail is order ID, product ID, unit price, quantity, discount, which is exactly what matches with our, uh, you know, uh, table in the Northman database. So Northman database has a table which has, you know, orders table which has order ID, product ID, unit price, quantity, and discount. Okay. So this is what. So right now we'll go back. Is that uh, so we have right now written a method which has eight order details. So <clears throat> here is the catch. So this double shift service is, uh, you know, it can be consumed by any kind of application. Let it be a speed application. Let it be a light based application. Let it be a double bit application. But when we are going to call it from jQuery, okay? When we are going to call it a jQuery, call it from a jQuery, we are expecting, uh, you know, <clears throat> the response should be in the JSON. When we are calling this method, calling this service method from a jQuery <coughs> in application from HTML page, what exactly we are expecting? As we have discussed, you know, the WC service is going to return the JSON. Okay, so how it is going to happen? So for that, we have to specify. Okay, we we have to specify. Okay, okay uh, you know, whenever there is a get request, whenever there is a web get request. We want that response format to be in the JSON format, right? That is JavaScript object notation. Okay. So once again, <clears throat> what we want to specify? Well, we want to specify when there is a web web get request. Okay. That means whenever this method is invoked from a web <coughs> application. Okay. We want the response format. 
Okay? So, in B format, we want them to be in J format. Okay? So that's it. Now, uh, when we'll see it in action, when we will invoke this from a way, then we can see it's going to be in JSON format. All right. So this is <coughs> our, you know, uh, you know, the service contract part. So we are all good way through it right now. So right now we're going to see how we're going to implement it in our data retrieval of SPC. So come here, let's come here, and uh, yes, there will be this chaos. So because the interface doesn't have this methods, so let's go ahead and delete this one and uh, first of all we will rename this one. We will rename this to we are going to rename this one to the same name uh, what we have in our class. So let's go ahead and rename this one as and we are going to implement the interface. Okay. Correct. Okay, so once again, when we are going to write a visual service class that is specifically going to be used uh, with a web application and when we are going to call it from a you know J uh, you know jQuery or when there is a jQuery request we need to add few other things to our WCF service class. Okay. So what exactly we are going to add the you know uh, attributes ASP.NET compatibility, compatibility requirement sorry so once again it is ASP.NET compatibility requirement okay and we have to specify what is the requirements mode okay so we are going to specify the requirements mode is you know it should be allowed ASP.NET compatibility mode should be allowed okay not by default it comes with it but if you know uh, it's going to be consumed from a ASP, you know, web application. So we have to specify the the ASP, ASP .NET compatibility requirement, and we have to specify it has to be you know uh, allowed. So we are going to do it right now. So, so um, right now ASP .NET compatibility is within the using system dot service model dot activation. Let's use that. And right now what we are going to do is we will specify the requirement mode. That's what requirements mode equal to. So let's go to the inner SP topic requirement mode dot allow. That's what we want and that's it. So main two things when you are creating service that is going to be consumed by a web application uh, or let's say you are going to call it from here jQuery best application we are going to call the service using uh, it on client side scripting. So you know uh, uh, in the class what you, you have to mention this ASP dot ASP.NET compatibility requirements and you have to allow it that is number one and the number two thing is you know in the operate uh, in the interface you have to say in whether it is a web gate or whether it is web post we are not discussing right now the post method we are just going to speak about web gate right now maybe i will explain what is how to deal with the web post with uh, web post how to post uh, things to the web safe service and it respond back in some other video right now but we are just going to see uh, we are right now defined okay uh, we uh, this is a web gate method and how it is going to be written it's going to be written as a json format so in the interface you are going to say whether it is we create or we post and uh, <clears throat> you are going to de define the you know format in which format it should be written and in the service class you have to allow the ASP.NET compatibility requirement so that's it these two things you really need to take care and uh, the other things are pretty much same so let's go ahead and actually do the do our you know implementation or uh, so let's start with it okay so right now <coughs> I'm going to write the a code which is going to you know retrieve some data from the North End database. So let's start. Now for the implementation I'm just going to you know uh, paste the code. Uh, this is the simple retrieval of the data from the database. So I just uh, I have already you know, copied that code. So I just you know uh, 
in the middle of that. Uh, yes, my script is on. So it's just going to, you know, our order details table and it will be in the link from the database. That is pretty much it. Nothing much here. So right now we have our implementation ready with our activity ready. Right now we have to make our service up and running. So let's go ahead to our web.config file and indeed the WCA conclusion. Okay. So right now we are just going to create a new service. Let's browse for it. Let's go and set the bean folder. Yes. Okay. Next. Yes, this is the contract. We are going to use HTTP. That's okay. So we see ourselves in interoperability. That's okay. And what we want our service in front of this to be. So 